All right, so today's a pretty exciting day. We're at Hi Hello Labs here in downtown Orlando. We're the Better Man Podcast. With all five of us guys, this is the type of a format where it's like a round table format. And it's really all to benefit our guys who are watching. And at the same time, you're gonna watch us kind of iron sharpen iron together. So we're gonna do this together. Can't wait to get started. All right, okay, so what, what do we expect? What do we expect for dudes to take away from five dudes here talking about talking about life? Well, I, I, ho I hope they can walk away with feeling like they, uh, they're a part of something. You know what I mean? Most men, you know, how I got myself in uh, you know, trouble over the years is I isolated myself. As men, we isolate ourselves. We get caught in the common thing, being a dad, being a husband whatever and uh we we go to the wrong things and you know just like the you know, we always joke around and we still do it out of uh a habit like a man comes up and goes hey man how you doing and we go good and deep down inside you're like i'm dying inside you know it's just like when he came up to us this morning at breakfast he says how you doing i said I i'm good and i said but that's a real good it's not a fake good i'm doing good <laughs> you know just men you know establishing a place for men to just feel like man you know because we've all we've all been there we've all made mistakes you know and we continue to make mistakes but through god's grace and his love and just like the encouragement of just like man you fall down get back up we're here for you we all we all go through this every single day you know what i mean yeah i mean i think that's a, a great way to put it i mean the the connections around this you know couch and chairs um some of it's been going on for a long long time yeah um some of it's newer but so even the newer stuff is it acts like the long long time dynamics in these relationships and it can but one as men you got to allow it and you got to and you got to you got to receive it and sometimes you got to pursue it and so it's awesome to see that where there are newer relationships here it's 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 functioning like that too but so that somehow uh, that you know anyone who's joining listening would um, you know, would would see that they would receive it, and they would just know that this is part as a man. It's just part of what the faith journey is really all about. Yeah, is the community. Yeah, and in and part of it is the community of your men, your people, right? So that that we would be that, be the hope. David, you you said you said a clear, concise earlier. Yeah, I don't know what I said. <laughs> it's about I made that up. Simplicity and. <laughs> Uh, reframe the question for me again. So the question is, is what would you hope that somebody would get out of this? I, I think in its simplest form is, uh, through our dialogue and vulnerability and honesty, if we can show up that way, if I can show up that way, uh, for however long we're doing this, that men, women, whoever's listening to this or watching this realizes that God operates in real time. He's not just in tomorrow or yesterday, but he's in this moment, and he can, he he he's there, and um, and so yeah, I I would say that that's where I'm at. Okay, let me exercise you. Br bring me a Whoa, moment where you say you exercise. Say <laughs> uh, is, that a, is that a subtle fat joke? <laughs> wow. <laughs> exercise me. You said that God is here in real time. How would I know that? How would I, how would I know that? Just sitting here, just sitting here with a bunch of you dudes. Especially if I don't know God. Why? Well, I, I think that I think one that's that's challenging. If if you don't know God, I think it's easy to ascribe everything to just sheer coincidence, serendipitous, or whatever kind of adjective you want to add in there about coincidence. Uh, I think that one of the beautiful things about community is that we can lend each other language. We can lend each other perspective around how God is moving um, there. Mm. So I. Uh, it, there's no, this is the challenge I have oftentimes with kind of like Christianese talk is that everyone's looking for an algorithm. Everyone's looking for a formula. If I put this input, I get that output. But I just believe that our dad operates in a way that uniquely reaches us individually. And for me to try to commercialize a formula to that, I think is is challenging um, because I, I, have, I have read accounts of like someone just watching the wind blow through the leaves and they encounter God, right? You know, or, or someone in a remote place in a jungle that has no context, nobody ministering to them or any of that stuff, and they come into the, the, the saving knowledge of Christ. Wow. 
You know, I came to know God in the back of a car uh, with zero kind of like background in reading the Bible. I thought the book was just like a regular book. So I turned to the last chapter because I didn't want to be disappointed. I wanted to know how the book ended. <laughs> and the book of Revelation in the back of a car that I read. Uh, the hardest uh, book ever. Yeah, well, <laughs> but but it's how he reaches you. And I, I use the illustration all the time. Like I have two kids, right? And I, I love these kids to the point that it's almost like suffocating. I can't articulate why I love these kids so much, right? It's, it's intense. I would die for these kids. I would do anything for these kids. However, I don't know how, I don't know the science behind it. I don't know what happens in the, in the dynamics of the universe, but they are totally different human beings, even though the environment's the same, the food's the same, the parents are the same, like they're just different human beings. And so even though I love them as intensely as I do, I have to express that differently. Because if I express it to one in a particular way, uh, if my kids had animal personalities, like my oldest would be like a dog and my youngest is like a cat, right? Like she, my oldest is just pleasing and loving and, you know, cuddly. And then the other one is just like, yo, I'll get to you when I get to you, but just very kind of like, so if I try to express my love for the older one, the way that I do for the younger one, it just is not going to work. It's not going to hit, even though I bring it as intensely. Right. Wow. And so I, I just think our dad, uh, to not cookie, cookie cutter an answer in that way of like, how do you encounter God? I think it's these little nudges that he brings awareness. I can only have faith because he, he makes himself known to me. It says, lest the spirit draws. I, I can't even come to him unless he's tugging on me and I'm kind of available in that way. And so I think it's unique for everyone. Yeah. But if we just go around this room, the mathematical improbability of us being together here with an ex drug dealer from the South Bronx, addict, all these other, like, we're all kind of crazy messes here. Um, yeah, we found each other. Why? Because we're clever and smart? No, because our dad really digs us. Amen. And he manages to find a way to kind of like reach us in a way that's meaningful to us, which is different than yeah. you, right? Um, and so I, I don't, you know, maybe it's a cop out. I'm, I'm kind of creating a back door for myself. But I do think that from the believer standpoint, there are some very real ways that God speaks. And one of the primary tools that he uses is the word. And really, um, I think collectively, I don't know how many hours people invest in their studies, but the word is one primary way that he speaks. Uh, he can use people to speak. He can use nature to speak. He can use circumstances to speak. If you want a really great book to read, uh, Encountering God by Henry Blackaby, it's an amazing book on, on understanding how to um, hear from God. And there's a ton of other resources. I'm just naming that because it's on the top of my head. Experiencing? Uh, experiencing God. That's what I, that's why you're Steve Jobs. Uh, <laughs> uh, and so, um, so with that being said, sorry for the, I'm not, I'm not sorry for the cop out answer. I just, mm -hmm. I, I think we're always looking for some type of algorithm and there are ways that he communicates that are listed throughout the word. Uh, but I think oftentimes, especially if you're not a believer, um, he, he uses whatever he needs to use to reach you. And I was in the back of a car homeless with a Bible that an, a gang member gave me. And mm. I read the book of Revelation and it made sense. Go figure. That's the first God, book you started please. with? Right? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> wow. I mean, like it made sense. Really? I was just like, oh snap, there's a God. Right? Wow. Like that. that's bananas, but it, it happens, right? Like it just, it, it happens uh, because he loves us and he knows how to minister to us and reach us individually. Uh, it's 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 absolutely insane. You read the Gospels and the disciples. I, I'll shut up. I know we have time constraints. You're good. But, but we, we read the Gospels and he, you know, I, I tell people all the time because I resonate with Peter a little bit is, you know, John, the, the disciple, John, he had a beautiful story. I mean, beautiful story. Oh, he writes about it. The one that, that Jesus loves most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love it. It's beautiful. Uh, John, the disciple is hanging with John the Baptist, right? So he's in the right place. He's, he's devoted. He's living out his life, right? Uh, trying to draw closer to God and express his faith. And then John the Baptist says, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin. And John is just like, I'm out, son. You taught me about this cat. That's who I was waiting for. I'm going to go check him out. So he goes with Jesus and it's beautiful. He lays his head on his shoulder and all this other stuff, right? Peter, bro, he's out there fishing all night. He's cleaning his net. It's a mess. It's not a clean story at all. Yeah. Like, and Jesus is just like, yo, can I finish this sermon? I'm getting in your boat. And then Peter has to make a decision, get in the boat, you know, and then he goes, okay, we're going deeper and then cast your net. We know all these stories, right? But it's not a clean, like, oh, behold the lamb. I'm just going to walk with Jesus. 
he hits everyone different. Yeah. Nathaniel's praying under a tree somewhere. We yeah. don't even know why he's praying, yeah. right? And Jesus just downloads a brief statement. And Nathaniel's just like, whoa, you it, right? Yeah. Right. You the truth. And so uh ghetto version of the Bible, but it's in there. Um and so <laughs> and so that's that to me is um kind of like the uniqueness of the journey. And, and my hope is um that again, going back to seeing him in real time is that through our individual expressions, which are so unique in this collective here, uh, that someone might resonate and find him in their own story. Mm -hmm. That it doesn't need to be my story, it doesn't right. need to be yours, it right. doesn't need to be yours. But man, if if that dude encountered him that way, I wonder if I've been missing him and he's been yeah. showing up. And so chances are the answer is yes. We all, we all have. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So there's something that you said because you rattled off a couple of stories, right? You mentioned Peter. And, I got and, ADHD, by the way. So I'm, I'm just shooting off. No, just, what, what, <laughs> what I want to mention and what I hope comes from this is that people decide to dive into the word themselves because right. um, you, you, you start. Okay. So uh, uh, I wouldn't know if you guys all wanted to go to a Chinese restaurant for lunch and, and you were say, Hey, invite your wife. Like, because I know my wife so well, I would be able to say, guys, it's just going to be us. She doesn't even like Chinese food. I'm not even going to invite her. When you get into this, you find out what the Lord is like and you find out what he likes, you find out what he doesn't like. And so you start to hear his voice a little bit more. Uh, and so that's that's what I hope. So like you you just mentioned all those stories. And so what happens is, is that when you get that language of how the Lord spoke to his people, how he is speaking to us today through other people, because you said that he will use other people. And uh, so I, that's that's my hope. My hope is that somebody comes out of this and somebody says, okay, I'm going to give the Bible a try. And if you give the Bible a try and you find that the Gospels may be too much for you or, or, or Revelation, I don't even know how you started there, or Genesis is too much for you, then maybe Proverbs. If you're somebody who you like the, the Chinese fortune cookie uh, fortunes, Go to Proverbs. That's where I started because I didn't understand the whole book. And I said, let me start in Proverbs. And it was a lot of little wise, wise sayings, a lot of little wise scriptures. And from there, that's that got me saying, wow, if God's like this, then, then what is he like in the book of Mark? And then what is he like in the book of John? And then, then you get wrapped in. Hey, before we finish this first segment, um, I just want to mention something real quick. So in the, in the first session of uh, the Better Man curriculum that we were talking about, um, there's something where it addresses the four challenges that men face going forward. Um, and there's a loss of common manhood vision, you know? So as we go through some of these episodes and we, we spend more time together, we'll talk about a vision for manhood. And I think we'll glean something from that curriculum from that, um, weightless manhood, you know, there's a, there's an aspect of weightlessness that's out there with a lot of men, you know, where they're not, um, they don't uh, feel they're, they're just absent. They're yeah. absent. You know, they're absent as a dad or they're absent as a you husband. Get OB to exercise them. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, Add some weight. The, you know, the, 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 there's a radically changing, rapidly changing social landscape, you know, mm -hmm. that we're dealing with in culture, right? Mm -hmm. That's also informing um, outcomes in our manhood, you know? And so that'll be an interesting thing to unpack as time goes on. But the one that I really wanted to point out was the lies, the lies that we believe about ourselves and as men. And in particular, um, one that I want to talk about here real quick uh, is the lie of vulnerability, that I can't be vulnerable. Um, I There was a post that we put on a few weeks back that I put on uh, the, the Better Man uh, 365 Facebook page that it was an article that I was reading about how men um, really struggle to make friends um, because many men actually see friends as a, as a feminine thing. You know, they see friendship as a feminine thing and they struggle with vulnerability because of that lie. If I tell you the truth about myself, you'll reject me, you know? Yeah. And so they'd rather just figure it out. They'd rather just be successful at whatever thing. They'd rather just kind of, you know, let me just, let me just suppress that. Let me not deal with that. You know, let me let me do this because this will define me better, you know, and they focus on whatever outcome, you know, whether it's success, business, you know, money, whatever. Right. But I so so if there's anything that someone, you know, gets out of this first episode, it's it's a it's a it's an invitation, I hope, to uh, to be open to the to vulnerability, you know, Um reach out to someone uh 
you know, extend a hand in relationship with, with another guy, with somebody that you could run with, reach out to somebody and, you know, and, you know, seek to, to get that, to know them better, but allow yourself to be known better. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and don't fear that, um, don't fear that outcome of what vulnerability will do. Because I think at the end of the day, if we can become more vulnerable with people that we can trust, um, I think it'll, it'll bring a lot of healing in our lives, you know? And I've found myself, uh, when I've, when I've made myself vulnerable to people in my life that I've become very close with, you know, a couple of guys here that are even in this room, um, it's made me a better person, you know, when I, when I can be challenged, when I can be transparent, when I can, uh, when I can be called out, you know, it's made me a better person. And so, so I just want to encourage anybody who's listening, uh, but even you guys, uh, vulnerability is key, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so you've heard this conversation here, and this is just going to be one of many, and I appreciate you guys being vulnerable and you guys being open. Uh, we're going to keep prodding. We're going to keep prodding, and we're going to keep opening areas where guys don't like to talk about, but those are the, those are the areas that I think when I've spoken about them, those are the areas that provide the most healing. So you guys ready for those kind of conversations as we continue on with this podcast? Yes, no. sir. No. No. No, <laughs> but I'm going to show up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and I won't exercise you anymore. Man. Oh, okay. I, I'm well, sorry I, that you I got need so, the, I, so afraid of that I'm, comment. I'm, I'm not. I know you're into fitness. And so <laughs> I, I need to take care of my temple. <laughs> oh, man. It's Better Man 365, the podcast, and we will be back. Hey, guys. A lot of times in these podcast recordings, we're going to discuss topics that are derived from one of the great curriculums that we're working with right now from Better Man Ministries. They have a core curriculum. It's 11 weeks long. And our team's been going through some of this curriculum. Wanted to let you know that some of the things that we're discussing are coming out of this curriculum. And so we hope that you'll take the opportunity to uh, be a part of this curriculum as well. Sometime in the future, either alone with a group of men at your church. It's a fantastic resource. And I just want to encourage you to be a part of it. Subscribe to the podcast and follow us at Better Man 365 on our social media platforms.